What's up guys, welcome back to part 2 of the Shadow Strike ability. In this video, we'll be working on some visual effects for the player and for the enemies. And so if I hit F, as you can see the character glows and it shows that the character is currently in a slow-mo time. And so if we also target enemy, the enemy also lights up, which gives some feedback telling the player that we are currently targeting a specific enemy. And we'll also be working on building the framework for the teleporting and executions. Currently, if I click on a target, I just teleport to them. I won't be playing any animations. And as you can see, the visual effects are still there. I get, I lose my slow-mo and I can constantly keep telling we're back to them as long as the shadow strike mode is still active. And there's some slight bugs and things that we will improve on in the next video. This video is gonna be quite long, so bear with me. We'll get things set up and we should be all finished by the next video. And if you want the access to these project files, you can join me on Patreon. So without any delays, let's get started. So in the last part of the tour series, we implemented a targeting system. So if I press F, we will be able to target and if we look away, we won't be targeting, but it's really difficult to see that. And so in this video, we actually want to start working on the visual effects and get some of the executions and motion warping in. So let's start with that. Let's start with the targeting VFX. The VFX is not exactly like a Niagara system. It's more of like an overlay material, but it serves the purpose of giving the visual representation of it. So it technically counts as a VFX in my opinion. So M underscore, let's make a material called M underscore overlay and right here. Open it up and in the detail settings, we want to change the blend mode from opaque to translucent. So we get almost like this dark thing. And here we want to make a vector three color, which we want to convert to a parameter and call it color. Just for purposes right now, we're just going to set this to red. And right here, we want to get a texture sample. Sample. And here in the and click on the texture sample node and then scroll down and get here into the textures. You want to find something. I'm going to use something that comes within the engine, which is this T soft smoke. And then I want to multiply that. So multiply that with the color. And then here in the color, we want to do another multiply to a friend zone. Fresnel, set this exponential to three, and then the reflect down to 0 0.0001. You can also convert these, make a parameter for these, so you can change within the engine, which, you know what, let's just do that. And so let's call this first one EXP, default value of three, set that in. Another one, call this Fraction this 0 0.001. Plug that in as well. Now this goes into the emissive color, and then we need to also have another multiply here. So with another called opac, which is the opacity for it. Uh, we're going to set it to five and see how it looks like. It might need some tweaking after this. Mm, yeah, I think that looks okay for now. I know it looks weird on the preview here, but once you get it onto a character, it looks quite nice. So let's save that and let me show you what it looks like on a character. So here, let's select this enemy and let's search, click on the mesh and let's search overlay. And then we have this overlay material slot. We'll just draw that in. And it should appear. There we go. It's pretty, and there you go. So you can tweak that value as you want. I might actually make it slightly. Actually, let's make a material instance. Makes it easier. So I might over them. Let's make that into like a darker version. So here in the opaque, let's make it four. Save that. Try that in here. So hold up, hold up. Select the enemy. Drag that in here. Slightly, yeah, 
So you can change the opacity, you can change the exponent here, which basically makes it however much fill to one, set it back to three, and then you can change the fraction here, 0 0.001, and yeah. You can tweak this however you want, but we won't be sending it like this, we'll actually be running code with it, so let's pop open the enemy here and let's get that working. Create a custom event here called on target. Typically, I would uh, recommend you guys using interfaces so you don't actually have to hard cast to the hit actor and then call this function. But for this basic example, we'll just be doing this. Grab the mesh and we'll be getting a function called set overlay material. And here in the overlay material, we can set our MI underscore enemy overlay and then we need another function called end target which we can grab the mesh and then set over the material and we can just leave this one blank so this one would set the material set So now that we have that done, let's head over to the player and actually call and cast the hit actor to actually play that, to actually set that overlay material. So here, before once we hit it, we should actually do a, we should do a cast here. So cast to BP enemy, and then this BP enemy we should call on the targeted. And then here we should set it and here if the so here if we are if we change actors or no longer targeting something we want to first check if the target actor is valid if it is valid we can actually call a um, we actually call the end target so we can remove that overlay material now you can do this in a couple of ways you can either set this variable to the BP enemy type or keep this an actor but if we do keep an actor we need to cast it every time we do this so to save some effort here we can actually make a function so right here we're going to hit reset target and here reset target you want to make a is valid mode and we'll check if our target actor is valid if he is valid we want to cast to bp enemy And then here we want to end target. Once we end the target, we can clear the actor. Right here, if it fails, we should also clear as well. So now we don't actually need to do this. We can just remove this and remove this and we just call our function. Now you can also do the same here with the set target actor. So here we can also do set target actor. And we should take an input called actor. Type of actor. Right here we want to check if it is valid, which we actually we don't need to check if it's valid because usually we can we can just straight up cast to BB enemy. If the cast fails. It either means that the actor is not a BB enemy class type or either the actor is not valid. So a cast could serve as an is valid node, but it's typically better to just use the is valid. But here we can use end target or setting the target, so on target. And then we can set our target actor. If it fails, we won't be setting the target actor, we would just be ignoring it. So here we can remove all of this and we can call our set target actor function and then we can plug this in here. Now if we give this a roll, it should be working. So good roll. So if we target enemy, he glows red. If we look away, he doesn't. Close red, no. 
Now we can actually make this color a lot more brighter. Set this to like 50. There you go. And then change this color to maybe five again. 50 might be too much, but let's let's see. Oh, actually it looks pretty nice. So I'm gonna keep it like that. Now that we got a visual representation of who we're targeting, we can actually remove this. We won't be needing that anymore. Let's throw in some extra enemies and let's see this thing come to light. So we're throwing an enemy up here. Throw an enemy over here. Should be able to target between the three of them. Whoops, that was the wrong key. Pull this up and then hit end. So now if we hit F, we can target this and then we leave that, target that, target this, target that. And yep, everything seems working. Now here, we have the issue where if we end on a target, he doesn't lose that overlay material. And so here, we should start making functions for this. So here, we should collapse this into a function, call it start shadow mode. And so, as the name suggests, it pretty much just sets the variable and just slows down time. And the one on the end here, on the finish pin of our timer, we should collapse this to a function as well. Call this reset shadow mode or stop shadow mode. So in here on the stop shadow mode, we should also reset our target. So if we already have a target, it should clear it because we're no longer in the shadow mode. So if you give this roll again, we shouldn't have that issue anymore. And yep. We won't have that issue where if we are targeting an enemy and our... Well, hold up. Oh, got a bit of a bug here. Now let's see what's going on. If well, our target is not valid, we should set the actor. Ah, I see now. So once we... Before we set the actor, we should actually check if our target actor is valid first. Now, because we do, because we're setting a new target, if we change targets, this variable changes, but we don't call the off the end target. So here we need to check is valid. Now, if this is, now if the target actor here is valid, then we also need another cast to enemy. And then we actually need to end the target here. So, end end target and then on the is not valid pin we should continue with the code or if the cast fails or if we are finished ending the target so right here now that should fix that issue now we could actually wait hold on we have a function for this I don't know why am I doing this we have a function for that reset target that basically did the same exact thing we did except that clearing the target might be unnecessary in this case but it's fine since we'll be re we'll be setting the target afterwards anyways so that should do the trick now let's get this wrong yep no i don't think we'll get that issue yep all of our issues for now should be resolved. Great, now let's start with working on the visual effect for our character. So let's make a material instance, MI clear overlay. Here, I'm just gonna change the color. So I'm gonna change the color to like bluish. And then change the brightness on this to 50. And I want to keep everything the same, except maybe drop this down a little bit. Exponent should be fine. Now for the characters, it's straightforward and it's the same idea. If we are in the shadow mode, we should set the overlay. If we end it, we shouldn't be. So set overlay material. And the start. And we'll call this MY player overlay. And then here on stop, same thing. We should clear it. Thank you. 
Looking like scary all. Alright, now let's give this a roll. Nice. So if it ends, we should also end our clear arm. Great, works perfect. Now the next thing we'll be doing is actually doing the execution. So to start off, let's work on getting the input first. So let's make a new input. So here an in input, call it IA execute. This one will also have the same trigger as the other one uh, pressed. And let's add this to our mapping, input mapping. And I'm just gonna bind it to my left mouse button. Mm, that's the wrong one. Wrong one. Wrong one. Wrong one. Wrong one. Add mapping. Then it should be execute. And then we add my left mouse button. Now you can use any key you want. I'm just gonna use my mouse mouse button because it's more natural to me. So here, let's call it IA execute. And here in execute, we need to make sure of a couple of things. First, we need to actually be in the shadow mode. And the second thing would be whether or not our target actor is actually valid. Now, if these are both true, that means we have a target actor, we are in the shadow mode, we can execute an enemy. So here, we should be good. Now here, we'd actually start to code the functionality for the execution. So here, I'll get a set after revision. Now here we're gonna do find look annotation. And then here we want to get after location. to get our target actor location so grab our target get actor location and plug that in here now the next thing will be actually setting our actor location set actor location and then should be set to our target actor but then make sure sweeping is on so we don't actually collide with we don't actually like clip into him so we can actually test that now, see if it actually works as intended. So if we target someone, we click, we peer on, then if we do it again, and we click on someone else, if the targeting system will get our range, teleports to him. So it works, but we're still in this slow mode version, slow mode time. So to stop that, we want to click reset our global time dilation. So set. back to one. Now the reason why I'm not using N shadow mode is because I want to keep that overlay active while we're doing this. So if we reset the code with direct dilation, we can play an animation here. Montage and a montage. Here, let's make some animation montages. So attack, executions, here, select all three and let's create animation montage. Here, let's call this and ex underscore one and you know, underscore underscore ex underscore two and you know, underscore ex underscore three let's just play one of them we won't we will expand on this in a later episode but let's just see if this thing will get working as intended as of now so click here Yep, so it works, but we're clipping into it. It's probably because we don't have root motion enabled. Let's see, force root lock, root motion enabled, root motion enabled, and root motion enabled. So we get this go. Nice, so we should. Yep, so time doesn't reset. So the way we will start resetting this is with our chain reactions, our chain executions. And as you can see, our character is tilted in an odd direction because our calculations for the fine look at direction is quite off. But this video is quite long already, so I'll split this into a next episode, next part, next tutorial series. And we'll fix most of these bugs and get this system working with root motion. So 
with motion and motion warping. So I'll see you there.